Welcome back to Fundamentals of Financial Management, Chapter 11. Today we're going to do questions 1 through 6. I'll show you the question, you can pause it, then we'll work it out together on the board. So let's start with question number 1. All right, this is an awesome chapter. We get to use our financial calculators again. Love this chapter. This first question says, Project L requires an initial outlay of T equals zero. So that's just saying time equals zero. So at the beginning of the time or the beginning of starting to invest for the project, we're going to put out $65,000. So let's just write Then its expected cash flows are $12,000 per year per nine years, and its WAC is 9%. What is the project's NPV um, or net present value? This is a super fun one. First, um, we're gonna assign this, and this is, all, you can do it by hand, but it takes a long time, so I'll just show you how to do it on your financial calculator. Um, we're gonna assign this to CF0, so at time zero. Um, then we know our cash inflows, 12,000 for nine years. And then our WAC is just gonna be our I and that's gonna equal nine. <clears throat> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our financial calculator. Let's see, turn it on, <laughs> that'd be a good start. Let's clear it by going F clear F, that's gonna clear all sections, then we're going to input this first, and how we're going to do that, we're going to go 6500, zero, zero, six, zero, zero, zero. it's going to need to be negative because it's going out, so we're going to press CHS to make it negative, then to assign it to CF0, we're going to press G, and then PV, that's going to activate the little blue, and then next we're told $12,000 is um, per year of cash flows and so that we're going to want to assign to CFJ here and this is the tricky part if you have um, cash flows that aren't the same every year then you can just press like one cash flow G CFJ another G CFJ but this is a little hack that'll save you a lot of time if you don't want to do it for nine years here's what you can do we can go 12,000 then assign it to C um, FJ so the cash flows and then we can just press nine and then g and then right here that's going to activate nj so that's going to um, tell us our years and then for i we're going to go nine i and then to calculate our mpv all you have to do is f and pv there we go let's see if that's right awesome so our mpv net present value equals $6,942.96. Perfect, we're already done with one. <clears throat> now let's go to question number two. These first five questions are all using the same number, so I'll just leave this up here. Here's question number two. It is asking, it says, refer to problem 11.1, what is the project's IRR? And so all we have to do, um, I believe, let me see. It's almost too easy, y'all. All we have to do, we can just leave these numbers inputted and press F, I, R, R. Perfect, and our IRR is 11.57%. So let's write that here too. That is a nice orange. <clears throat> I'm sorry, if you hear the cats meowing, I'm cat sitting. They're cute. We don't, they're not in trouble, don't worry. Okay, next, our third problem. It's asking for the MIRR. <clears throat> so we can leave those same numbers inputted. This one's a little more complex because it's a two stepper. We need to find future value first. And how we're going to do that, all, it's all in the financial calculator, but I'll just like write out um, what we're going to input. <clears throat> they use pink. Um, so our first step, let's come over here. First step is find future value. 
And how we're going to do that is we're going to input n for 9. So you notice that we didn't assign our years as 9 for the first one. Whenever you're finding um, your NPV, 9 for the years is always going to go in your nj, not your n. But then when you find future value, you can put it in your n. So it's going to be 9, our i, it's going to stay 9. Present value, it's going to be 0. Then our payments. be 12,000 and the future value of course is what we're looking for so let's input it I'm just going to clear the calculator to make it simple um, first let's put 9 to n 9 to I 0 present value 12,000 payments future value is that correct yes and you're gonna get a negative if you don't make the payments negative um, you could just ignore that and make it positive so our future value, let's see. I guess only one line because we still have step two. So in step two, now we can find our MIRR um, and that's going to be I um, for our financial calculator. So we can keep the N the same. So N is going to be nine. Our present value, this time uh, we're going to use $65,000, but you got to make it negative because either future value or present value needs to be negative or else it'll give you an error. So we can bring this down here, but I'll put it in parentheses so it's negative. <clears throat> and then our payment, this time it's going to be zero. And then, what are we missing? Our I. Our I, that's going to be the answer. And then our future value we just found. Cool. So for this one, I'm going to make future value positive and then assign it to future value. Then 9 should already be N, but I'll just enter it just so y'all can see that. I is what we're going to find. Um, present value, 65,000. Negative. Zero payments. And then I... That's giving us, is that correct? 10.24, let's see. Oh no, give me one sec. I didn't write down the solution. Rookie mistake. 10.24, okay. It's always risky like the first couple of minutes when I'm filling these because it's like, if you get one wrong, you seriously messed up. You gotta redo the whole, the whole thing, so whatever. It is 10.24 though. That's awesome. There we go. Next, our final question for um, this set of numbers is question number five. <clears throat> I'm actually going to erase this because this is a really long question. This is why we're only doing the first six because you have to do like a whole chart, but it's really fun. It's like Sudoku. So I'm going to erase this. Y'all got it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so for this problem, what is the project's discounted payback? Let's get into it. All right, discounted payback here. All right, so how we're gonna find this, we need to make a chart. And so this chart is gonna have four columns First column is our periods, so uh, it's actually not going to be nine periods. It's going to be ten periods total because you have to count year zero because that initial investment. So we're going to have ten periods. Then our next is going to be our cash flows. So these first two columns are super simple because it's just negative sixty-five thousand and then twelve thousand down. And then the next one is our cash flows at our discounted rate. So if you remember, our WAC was nine percent. We're going to have to discount our cash flows by nine percent. I'll show you how to do it. It's very easy. And then next is um, the cumulative amount. So then it, it's easier if you see it. Let me get into it. First, we're going to write our periods.
So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Y'all can see that? Okay, cool. Um, that's all we gotta do for that column. That's as easy as it's gonna get, I think so. Next we have our cash flows. So I'll just write CFs, y'all know what I mean. And so first, whenever it's a parenthesis, it's gonna be negative. Um, I think they do it for accounting just to like, you know, if there's a dash, it could get like your whole balance, um, your whole balance sheet wrong. So the negative is a little more clear. We're gonna go negative $65,000. Then 12,000, I'm just gonna write 12K cause it's easier, 12K. Okay. You know what we should do? Ah, that's like a little dance. There we go. We're gonna write 12K on all of them because we're getting $12,000 a year for nine years. Okay, next part is where it gets a little trickier. Now we're doing cash flows at our discounted rate. And how we're gonna do that um, is we're gonna divide 12,000 by 1.09. And the 1.09 is just one plus 9% of the decimal. So right here, this top line is also gonna be $65,000 right here. It's just the same. Um, yeah, the entire top line is zero and $65,000 because that's not changing. So we're always laying down $65,000. Um, and then 12K divided by 1.09, that is gonna give us $11,000 roughly. And next for this one, we're gonna divide this by 1.09. So, We're gonna do the same. We're gonna divide that now by 1.09. And just continue to flow all the way down. I'll write out the numbers as quickly as I can. You get the point. There we go. And you would think it would like even out to zero like on some graphs, but it won't. I'll show you what we'll do with these numbers. And all of these are positive, just for, for, your, for your reference. Next, we're gonna do the cumulative over here. So $65,000 negative up top. And what this one is, it's a little, it'll trip you out just a bit because this is negative. You're gonna add this number to this negative number. And so it's slowly gonna get less and less negative till it breaks even. And then that number we're gonna use for our formula. So I, I feel like there's probably a, a little bit of a faster way to do it, but this is it for now and it's kind of fun. So we're gonna add 11,000 to that and that'll give us negative $53,000. We're gonna add this um, $10,000 to
Okay, here's where it gets positive, which is awesome. Okay, there we go. Now we have this chart, and you're probably like, okay, what do we do from here? I got you. Come here, Seth. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at our chart, and we're going to add the last negative year. So let's find out first. Where's the last year where it's negative? Right here. So as you can see, this is the last year with parentheses. We're going to take seven. Where can I do this? I'm just gonna do it down here. I hope y'all can see that. We're gonna take seven, and then two seven, we're gonna add, y'all don't need this, you get the point. We're gonna add um, that last negative number. We can make it positive though. So we're gonna go. And then we're gonna move a line down and um, the, the first positive year, we're going to take the discount of cash flow. And that should give us our answer, which is seven. Let's see what it was. I think it's roughly like 7.7. Okay, cool. 7.76 years. There we go, that's our discounted payback. Um, yeah, I guess that's all we had to do. Uh, let's move on to our final question. Oh, this is, this is a long one too, it's cool. And this is good because it's the end of the easy questions. But then we'll go on to intermediate in the next video. Let's erase this first. <laughs> it sucks to erase this beautiful work, but what can you do? I just like how it like comes together and it all like fits into, it just like fits together so nicely. It's so satisfying. Don't cry now. All right. Um, 11.6, your division is considering two projects with the following cash flows in millions. Well, let's not work with the millions. I think it's easier to just it won't affect the numbers. Um, what are the project's MPVs, assuming the WAC is 5%, 10%, and 15%? Okay, so this one's nice because they give us a timeline already written out. Uh, normally, I would say make a timeline, but these ones are so simple that we haven't really needed to, but it's good practice, so let's make it. So I think it's for, yeah, three years. So zero... And then, you know what, let's put that up top, sorry. And we're told for project A, we'll do A in pink, uh, B in purple. We're told for project A that this is the cash flow. So we have the first one negative because we're putting down the money, of course, and then And then we're asked for the NPVs, so we're just going to do what we did for our very first problem. But this time we're going to have uh, several different wax, so our I is just going to change. It should be really easy if you have your financial calculator, but let's just write out what we're going to need. So when I is 5%, when I is 10%, when I is 15%, um, our MPV for A, and then for B. Okay, let's get to it. So first, 
Oh, this is a good example because this is uneven cash flow. So we're not going to be able to use our trick where we enter three like we did last time. So this is good. We're going to go 25, make it negative GPV. That's going to assign it to CF0 at time zero, as you can see. And then our first one, we have five. Sorry. So we're going to put five to CFJ. Then we're going to put 10 to CFJ. And then we're going to put 17 to CFJ. Then we don't need to do anything here. Then it's going to be five I at first. And then our NPV is 3.52. And then all we have to do for the next one is press 10, assign it to I, and then we can get our MPV. It is 0.58. And then our next one is 15. So we're just going to go 15, assign that. Did I do 12? Sorry. We're going to go 15 to I, and then MPV. That is negative one point. Nine one, and then for B, we're gonna do um, the exact same thing, but just enter those numbers. So let's clear that. Then we're gonna go twenty, make it negative, put it in CFO, then ten, nine, six, so then five to I, then our MPV is 2.87 next we're going to do it for 10 percent so we're just going to make 10 ri and we have 1.04 then we can make 15 ri so negative 0.55 there we go. Here are our NPVs. And our next two questions. What are the pro? Okay. Um, the third one's conceptual, but our next question is what are the projects IRRs at each of these WACs? So you might be thinking, oh, I just redid it. I have to do six more problems. No, the, the WAC doesn't actually affect the IRR. So this is a little bit of a trick question. We're just going to have one IRR for um, A and B. So. I think we're on B right now. I think all we can do, or all we have to do is go F, I, R, R, and it won't matter what our WAC is. Perfect, that's correct. So our I, R, R, um, let's just write these ones, R, N, P, V, and our I, R, R is 13.18, and then I don't really want to re-enter all of A's, sorry about it. So it's 11.10%. Okay, final question. If the WAC was 5%, okay, so right here, and A and B were mutually, mutually exclusive, so we can only pick one, which project would you choose? What if it was 10% and 15%? Okay, so for this one, we're just going to have to select one for each. And so all we have to do is look at which NPV is higher. So. A, or for 5%, it's going to be A. For 10%, it's going to be B. And then for 15%, it's a trick question. We should actually do neither because they're both negative, so we'd be losing money. There we go. Okay, cool. Just a quick little, quick little first six problems. I'll try to get the next vid uploaded today. Hope this was helpful.